to be or not to be consistent. I start stuff and I don't finish them. And I don't care. Welcome again, guys. Welcome in my bathtub. As you can see today, uh, I'm very comfy. Yeah, I'm getting more and more comfortable. To be or not to be consistent. I start stuff and I don't finish them. And I don't care. Today I wanted to talk about this topic uh, because um, it's been a pattern in my life. I felt guilt for a long time. I guess I solved the problem with myself, but seeing people in my personal life struggling around that idea was eye-opening somehow. I start things and I don't finish them, and that's okay. I will start projects, hobbies, and halfway I will realize that I don't care, I don't want to go further. I'm not talking about my professional life, this is different. I'm talking about my personal life, my hobby and my personal stuff. I don't finish TV shows, I don't finish books. I will start on a hobby, decide I like it or I don't like it and I'll just drop off. Oh, and I also don't finish video games, drive my boyfriend crazy. Don't get me wrong, like it's not I never finish anything, but I will have these very obsessive moments about something for a few days or a few weeks and then drop it completely. Yoga, climbing, horse riding, I paint, I write, often I won't finish my essay or my painting. On a personal level, I like, you know, starting projects in my head and being obsessive about it and building this whole story about it in my head and that I just don't do it. It's never gonna be in reality and that's okay. You see, it stays a fantasy, like something that entertained my brain for a while. And if I do, which sometimes I do, I'll probably drop it after a while. So yes, why talking about it? Most people, and myself first, uh, consider that as you know being inconsistent, being unstable. And I think part of that is our education, um, very centered around achievements and goals. You know, it's this ascendant line of success that your life is supposed to be. But you know what? I guess life and people don't work that way. Or at least I don't function that way. So my question is why do we put so much value into being consistent and being stable? And what do we mean by being, you know, stable and consistent? Would I be a better person if I'm stable or consistent? Because, you know, I make a decent living, um, I pay my bills, I respect most of society's rules. So again, when it's about my personal life, my personal projects and my hobbies, why would I put consistency and somehow a goal-oriented mindset into that? It's okay to try something and not like it and just drop it. Furthermore, it's also okay to try something, like it, and then just decide to not carry on. You can even be good at it and not continue, right? I was talking about this ascended line. I often consider my life as a spiral, like, you know, a never-ending cycle. So much of that depends of, personally, my emotional and mental health. Um, the energy I'll have to achieve things, the money I can put into that. Maybe, maybe, we could trust ourselves. If you start something and you don't follow it, this is, you know, it's not the moment, it's not the time for it, maybe it's not just for you right now, if you don't have the energy for it, then it's fine. Maybe we could just trust ourselves. Trust that, you know, if we have to come back at that, then we will, and it's gonna be okay, even if it's in three weeks, two months, two days, three years, ten years. Think about it. Conclusion, 
I don't want to put these rules into my personal life. I have a successful career, I pay my bills and I make a decent living. So I just take the luxury of being inconsistent and instable when it's about my hobby, uh, when it's about my creativity and when it's about just trying out and having fun. You may think I'm this loosey person that never achieve anything and you are wrong. I'm actually really proud. I've achieved many of the things I wanted in my life. Um, it's not finished and I trust myself that I will accomplish what I'm supposed to do. What I wanted to say is, you know, it's possible to just follow your intuition and your own rhythm with things like that by going small step by small step. If it's not today, it's going to be tomorrow or in three weeks, but it's going to come back and eventually you will be able to progress on whatever you are interested in, if you really want to do it, just small step by small step. Also, trying thing you may think uh, is uh, costly. I live in a big city and right now I don't have a lot of money, but I keep on trying things. I go to my library and it has an extensive choice of things I can borrow and training I can attend for free. Whenever I want to try on a new hobby, I usually call the club or the association or whatever and I ask them, oh, do you have like a one hour, two hour trial, you know, introduction class? And most of the time you can try it for free. You can attend meet up, find people on the internet, go on YouTube and find resources and just buy your own cheap gear, just try it like me and skateboards. And when it's about art and I have often this question of like, oh, are you finished with your painting? What about these drawings? And I'm like, I don't know. I think, you know, some objects and some stuff have life of their own. They just exist and it's fine for the moment. You're gonna you know, reconnect with them and continue your relationship with them maybe a little bit later when they'll be ready and when you'll be ready. And the most important of all, and I will finish on that, all this knowledge that you gained when you were, I don't know, obsessive about plants and gardening and you never, you know, kept on with that. Well, it's not lost. You're still knowledgeable somehow, somewhere about it. It's gonna come back if you wish it to come back. Thank you guys, thank you for watching. What did you think about my rumble today? Have you ever felt guilty that you didn't continue your hobby? Um, have you ever felt the feeling that, oh, okay, I'm really good at that, but you know what, I'm fine for now. How did your parent react? How did your colleague react? Most importantly, how did you feel with yourself? Please share with me in the comment below, and thank you for watching again. Bye.